Welcome to uh, Iti Hoyo 101. Um, we're going to, I'm going to talk about how I hunt and look for hickory the way that I was taught. So what I look for normally is obviously a hickory tree. Uh, I look at the bark. The bark has usually got some sort of gray on it. Um, mainly, I look at the leaves. A lot of times they have hickory nuts like this. Uh, you can look on the ground or you can see them hanging up there. When the, when the leaves are all gone, then you gotta look at the way the branches are shaped, how they look at the top and ha what the bark looks like. Uh, and then obviously you can look on the ground. Uh, Mississippi Choctaw tell me that if you weren't for sure, some of these leaves look similar. If you pull one off and you rub, your, uh, rub it in your hands and smell it, it kind of smells like a minty. So if you don't, yours don't smell like that, then you don't have a hickory. Well, when you're looking for a tree, you're looking for a straight trunk of the tree. Uh, some stick makers only take the trunk. Uh, me personally, I try to salvage as much of the tree, so I'll go up at least until the first knot or first branch. One thing we're trying to look for is a, a straight uh, hickory without any knots or twists or anything. You can keep going further. This one actually we can get, like I said, hopefully five cuts. I see a few knots, but I think it'll be okay. So when you cut it, when you cut your tree, you actually want to make sure you've got a, you know, just like your normal rules of felling a tree. It's got a way to fall. Um, if you don't have the, the means, gator or any way to pull it you don't want to get too far in the woods like now we wouldn't normally do this because it'd be too far for us to drag this out but we have the means so we're hoping that this will fall um, you want to cut as low as you can when you when you drop this tree uh, and then i'm going to cut four feet you can cut four five six even eight feet depending on who um, you are if you get a wider one a lot of times we use a sawmill. Traditionally, they would just split it. Split it in fours. One stay would make one stick or two sticks. But we're, we're doing this a more contemporary style, so we'll be able to get as much wood as we can. Chickasaw way is to utilize every means they can to get a good outcome. So that's kind of why we're going to do it that way. Our next step would be to take these logs here and set them up, split them into four sections or four staves. Um, the best process is to uh, start at the top. This has a natural split into it. So we normally take this wedge or the maul and we'll place it into the split that's already created. Um, this helps the this helps the wood split along the grain, the current grain that it's already at. Once you 
knock that in there, it should open it up. And then we'll start splitting it open all the way down. Cut it in half, and then we'll turn it sideways and then split it again all the way till you have four staves, four sections. Once you have your um, logs split into four staves, this is one stave here. We'll then go to the uh, table saw and we want to cut out all of this rough, this rough cut to where it's smooth. We'll do this side first and then we'll smooth out this side so that you've got a flat, smooth surface and then you can start the process of cutting your one inch pieces out until the wood is all gone. Once your uh, staves are cut smooth on each side, we'll then uh, set the saw blade to one inch in width and then we'll cut the stave up into sections like this. This is one inch wide and that'll be the next step is to get all of your staves cut into pieces like this. Okay, after your one inch pieces are cut, you're now gonna set your saw blade to various sizes. This particular is five eighths in width. And then you'll, you'll cut five eight pieces that look similar to this. And at that point, you'll be ready to inspect your sticks and then mark your cups to cut out. Okay, once your sticks are cut out, you're then going to take your stick and you're going to look at it to see which end is the best to be your cup. Typically, you want it to be closest to where you cut the tree um, that was from the ground. You want to mark this between 18 inches, 20, 22 inches. Um, I'm going to do this one at 20. And all I do is just kind of mark it at 3 inches, at 20 inches. I'll go 3 inches in, 17. And then this should be 14 inches. So I'll verify just by counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'll mark it at the 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then at that point, I'm left-handed, so I'm going to mark it on the right-handed side. And then this is ready to be uh, cut out for the cup. This one, all you'll need to do is once you figure out which end you're going to use, which side is the best side. Then I'll just use this as a template. And then repeat the process the side. So once your lines are marked, like I said, I'm, I am uh, left-handed, so I'll put my markings on the right side. If you're right-handed, you typically put it on the left side. Because then you're going to take your finger and you want to make it about, I don't know, I say it's like putting three quarters, tape them together that width. You're going to take your line. And you're just going to make a line go all the way down. And then this here, I'll just kind of freehand it. And now my line is set. Once your line has been marked, um, what we'll do is we'll then be able to cut following this line. We'll cut it out and then what will be left uh, will be our cup so then they'll be ready to turn.
Okay, once your cup has been cut, you're now going to go to the turning station and we had marked these lines earlier. You're going to clamp down on this pipe on the center line. And then you're going to push this down all the way, bring these two lines together. This, this, these uh, hose clamps will hold this in place. So when you get to the next process of flaring your stick, this is the turn process and then the last one will be to flare it out, your stick ball stick. Your cup, this is just holding this in place so that it doesn't move on you whenever you, you flare it. There it is. So once you have your turn, you're now ready to uh, flare. This is a flare station. Um, you're, this is gonna be a right-handed stick, so you wanna make sure that your shoulder is on the right side. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna press down on this and it'll open the stick up. So I will attempt to do that right now. I slightly turn this to the left, makes it easier for whenever you get ready to match your sticks up. And then you just tie this on here, this kind of holds it in place. So it'll set like this for, if it's sunny, you can have it set for 24 hours. If not, like today, you'd want to normally set it for a couple days. And then, it, then after that, you're able to take this all off and then it should have a good flare. Once we've pulled the sticks off of the flare station, uh, we're ready to do the sanding. And any rasping that needs to be done, it's just taking off these edges here, smoothing this out so that you don't get any splinters. to do your lacing. So you're gonna drill your, mark your holes, the top and on the sides. Uh, we're gonna use this drill. You could use uh, a nail and heat and just burn them through. Uh, but we're not gonna do that, we're just gonna use this. So you're gonna drill these holes. I'm gonna mark them first. And all I do is just kinda lay a pencil like that to kinda just kinda get a center point of the cup. Of the cup. kind of drill me a little hole here. And then I kind of just eyeball it about where I want to put it. So it's kind of about right there. At that point, I'm ready to drill.
Take some sandpaper and things from just a little bit. Sometimes these splinter like this when you use the drill. So you may have to use this uh, like a rasp to get that extra stuff off of there. Cut this. I'm just tying this here. This is going to hold the cup in place. You can use tape, paracord, anything you want to use. This kind of holds it in place and kind of makes it really tight around the shoulder area, which is this area. Um, more solid so when the stick hits it, sticks hit it in the game, it won't break. or it's less likely to break, rather. You can wrap these anyway. This is kind of a simple way to do it. I'm just going over and under the string. It just makes it look pretty. Once I'm done, I'll make a little loop and I'll wrap it once or twice. Then we'll stick it through the loop. I'll pull this through and then just tie it off. something like this when you're done do that so now I'm ready to take my lacing string I just stick it through the top I know it and I had seen some old <clears throat> Chickasaw sticks that from like 1903, 1907, and it had this lacing. You can lace it any way you want as long as it's got like that X, that cross looking pattern. But this is kind of the way that I seen and I started lacing mine that way. It's kind of like my trademark, I guess. A lot of times people have sticks out there and you don't know whose are whose and if they hadn't relaced the sticks, then I can tell when that they're mine. So I still have that little cross looking pattern as uh, the normal. And then I just pull it tight. It really doesn't matter how you tie it on here as long as it's secure. Everyone does their own lacings any way they, they choose. This is kind of just my own preference. I teach people this way. There's another way. 
where you have a string to come down here, tie it off, and then you have another one that wraps around. It's kind of like how a lot of Mississippi chalk dolls do their lacings. There's some different variations of how they do it. And you're done. So you just have the matching one go with it. And you're finished.